Hi guys, so today's video is going to be a non-spoiler book review and then a spoilery chat for The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson. Of the three books in the first Era Mistborn trilogy, I find this one to be the least exciting. That's not to say that the story is boring or that it's bad. It's just that the characters themselves have had to endure so much in the first two books that they have persevered through so much hardship and it's starting to take its toll. On top of all that, there are so many reveals, so many discoveries. Our characters are truly pushed to the limit to the point where they they feel so hopeless. They don't think they have a chance. The antagonist is one that they feel like they're fighting blind. They know nothing about. They just don't think they can do it. And reading that does not make for the happiest of reading experience necessarily, but it is the kind of story that by the time you get to the end, it truly feels like the end of something epic. That's it, that's all I'm gonna say for the non-spoiler portion. I'm gonna jump into the spoilery chat now, so if you haven't read it, please stop watching now. Before I get into all the mushy-gushy stuff because this book just destroys me, before I get into that stuff, I want to ask two questions. First off, I'm gonna put a little poll up at the top. How many of you guessed who the hero of ages was. If you guessed it, say yes, and if you didn't guess it, say no. The other question, I don't want, for anybody that clicks on this that hasn't read it all, I don't want them to accidentally click on it and get spoiled, so these questions are gonna seem very vague, but how many of you figured out that Vin's earring was how Ruin was affecting her? If you figured it out, say yes, and if you didn't figure it out, say no. So my second time around, it seemed so painfully obvious that her earring was causing this. The first time I did figure it out, I think I figured it out right around when she was being held captive and then she fought against Marsh. I was like, wait a second, she didn't have her earring in. And all the stuff about the hemallergic spikes and everything, I was like, oh, I got it, I got it. And then when I got to that part, I was so proud of myself when it revealed that it was her earring. As for Sazed being the hero of ages, I didn't call that. Looking back now, having read it before, I was like, oh my gosh, it's, it's so, it, yeah, he's the hero of ages, you see it, and all the little things that he's quoting from all these different religions, and you're like, oh my gosh, it's you, and the he'll have it on his arms, the fact that they don't use a specific gender, and man, reading it this time, I think Sazed's plotline upon reread was so emotional for me, and the first time I read these, I was very consumed, of course, with Vin and Ellen's plotlines, and this time, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming when I got to the end. Oh, it made me so emotional. I'm sorry, it's gonna be all over the place because I've told you guys that this book is just my, it just destroys me. So I'm super sorry that this is so all over the place. Okay, backtracking. Vin and Ellen. The first time I read this story, I was so engrossed in Vin's storyline. I relate to Vin so much. But then when she sees him die, I was like, no, I remember the first time I went through this, I was driving, I was stuck in traffic, and I was listening to the audiobook, and when his head gets cut off, I was like, no, no. And my husband kind of teases me about it, and I'm like, okay, but that's the thing, is like, I imagine being Finn and seeing your head get cut off. It impacts me so much because the trust and the love that Ellen and Finn have for one another by the end, because they had to go through a lot of frustrations in that second book, but when you get to that end and Vin has to see her husband die, I'm sorry, I feel like I'm shouting at you guys with my emotions here, but I actually do wanna read a certain passage because there I tabbed a, a few things up in the book and Ellen and Vin and says its plot lines to me are some of the most significant throughout the course of this trilogy and there's a certain passage that I think is just so tragic about Vin and her life and what she's had to go through these past three books So I wanted to read it to you guys because let's you know just wallow in the sadness that is this trilogy to give this passage some context This is when Vin is essentially reflecting on the fact that they thought they had it bad before but they just didn't know That's kind of the setup for this particular passage and it says yet yeah, during those months She had been content perhaps more content than any other time in her life she loved Ellen and was glad life had progressed to the point where she could call him husband, but there had been a delicious innocence about her early days with the crew. Dances spent with Ellen reading at her table, pretending to ignore her. Nights spent learning the secrets of Alamancy. Evenings spent sitting around the table at Clubs' shop, sharing laughter with the crew. They'd faced the challenge of planning something as large as the fall of an empire, 
yet felt no burden of leadership or weight of responsibility for the future. The reason that particular passage really stands out to me is because of where Vin's story ends up. I'm trying so hard not to get emotional. So when we first meet her in the final empire, she's just so broken and beaten down and timid and afraid. And the, the place that she gets put in when she gets kind of swept under Kelsier's wing and his tutelage, she finally has a chance. She has a chance at having enough power and enough confidence to not be so afraid. And she finally finds people that she can trust who love her and that she loves too. And you just want, you want a happy ending for her. You want to know that when the fight is over, she can finally rest. She can be with Ellen and she can enjoy this love she has for her husband and her, for her friends. And she can live in the world that she saved. Gosh darn it, I've tried so hard not to get super worked up. So <laughs> she, she never gets to be a part of the world that she saved. And it's like, ah. That passage to me, it just, it kind of reflects on, on that. The fact that she, she went through so much and then she always still was thinking about the good of the people. You know, she found glimpses of happiness through all of that. And it's like, uh, what are you doing to me, Sanderson? That's what it feels like when I read that passage. And upon reread, I got, I got two tabs for that. Cause I was like, I have to remember this passage. Cause it just, it really, really for me is why this book is, so beautifully done why this stupid story is so good to me Ugh, i know for those of you that don't love it this much you know whatever i'm sorry because i'm freaking out now you guys understand i wanted to make this video forever ago when i first the first time i read through this and i tried so many times to like think through what i was gonna say and i couldn't do it i couldn't do it because i was it was just too much for me and, and it's oh, clearly i'm still not making sense it's a bunch of jibber jabber okay composing myself. What I'm kind of trying to get at here is that Vin is not somebody who has had a fantastic, wonderful life. She is somebody who has had so much happen and she has had to go through so much. She has, has endured so much loss, but she lives for these glimpses of joy, these glimpses of happiness and of love. And those glimpses are enough for her to constantly put herself in danger to put her husband in danger her friends it's all enough for her because she wants to ensure that the world that she loves and that the people of this world are able to someday not have these in glimpses but to have these as their lives that's kind of that's kind of my takeaway for from vin and that scene at the end when they when spook and our side characters come out and they see vin and ellen and Sazed has a little thing that says that he can't figure out how to bring the soul back, but he thinks it's okay because they, they may need a little bit of a rest. It's like they never got that peace in their own world, but they get it through death. And it's just, huh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to keep it together, guys. It's just so beautiful to me. It's so beautiful, but so sad. And, and I'm glad for Vin and Ellen that in the end they, they do find that peace. I'm also happy that they got their dance before they died. Huh. Every scene like that was so much worse this time around because I knew for a fact what was going to happen. And so that dance between the two of them was just so sweet and so silly and just so... I'm so happy they got to have that moment together. Ellen's plotline and Ellen's character growth throughout the story is also one that is extremely transforming. The person that he is at the beginning and the person that he is at the end is so drastically different. And for a lot of people, they actually don't really like where Ellen ends up because he's this kind of sweet, idealistic boy who has these dreams of being an amazing individual who can help the world for the better. And the person that he has to be to truly help the world for the better isn't the person that he strives to be. And what I think makes this even more sad is that he thinks it too. So as a reader, you might be sad to see that he's not quite the same. Even Vin thinks at times, like I kind of miss that boy that he was, but Ellen's knowing that for himself. Ellen thinking, this isn't who I wish to be, but it's who I have to be. Ah, poor guy. The passage that stands out to me that does a really good job of showing this is actually a passage from Vin's perspective, not even from Ellen's perspective. And it says, 
The old Ellen had been a man who was easily dismissed by many, a genius who had wonderful ideas but little ability to lead. Still, she missed some of what was gone, the simple idealism. Ellen was still an optimist, and he was still a scholar, but both attributes seemed tempered by what he had been forced to endure. There are so many things that we could dive into with this story, but I wanted to focus primarily on Van Ellen and Sazed. So getting into Sazed's story for this particular book and the three books all together, Sazed's storyline is one that a lot of people get really frustrated with in this story. They get frustrated with him. They kind of want him to just snap out of it and be his normal, pleasant, calm self and have this faith again and be nice again instead of being such a downer. But I'm grateful, if you will, that that isn't how Sanderson wrote him. I know from a reader standpoint, when it comes to being entertained, it is not the most entertaining perspective to read about, but depression, especially depression stemmed from loss and grief. I shouldn't say especially, depression affects people in different ways and stems from different things, but given why Sazed is depressed, given that he is depressed, you don't just snap out of it. You don't just get over the things that you lost. You don't just get rid of your sadness. It's lingering, it's with you. And there are, are so many times that I think Sanderson has lines that really portray depression so well. And I just found that Sazed being a character to go through that, it's so impactful to see somebody who should be the one to always have hope, to see that character go through this. It's just one of those things where in real life, even the strongest people, even the best of us, you know, those people can succumb to these kinds of things. And I, I really appreciated that Sanderson had his story paced as it was. The line that I wanted to read for Sazed is when he's talking to somebody about faith. So that's kind of the setup for this one. And it says, the sense of despair inside Sazed wanted to snap that simply believing wasn't enough. Wishing and believing hadn't gotten him anywhere. It wouldn't change the fact that the plants were dying and the world was ending. It wasn't worth fighting because nothing meant anything. Nothing meant anything. That is, that shows it so well. It illustrates so well what it's like. And there's another line where he's talking to Spook and he's looking at Spook and thinking about how much Spook cares and how much Spook is trying. And he thinks Spook cares and I don't. That's just his, that's just what it is. And to see that and say that I know I'm kind of reiterating the same points over and over again with his character, but I just personally, I really, really felt that Sanderson did the mature thing, if you will. He didn't go for the just, oh, isn't it sad? Well, he's better now. I'm glad that it wasn't that and that he really let us feel what Sazed was feeling. And Sazed is just such a sweet person, just a sweet little soul. And at the end of the story, when he sees Vin and Ellen and he is thinking like, oh, no, it can't be me. And he thinks like, I am no hero. That line, ah, I'm like, you are though. And he even at the end thinks about how Vin was, of all the people that held preservation, that Vin was perhaps the most worthy, which I love Vin, but also says it is such a good, kind soul. And for him to even in his basically godhood to think that is so sweet and so telling of his character. Anyway, I'm gonna cut it off here. I know again that there are so many things that we could talk about. We could talk about Spook. We could talk about the Chondra and Tensoon. And there's just so much that we could talk about with this story, but I wanna leave some of it up for conversation with all of you. Let me know what your favorite parts of the story were. Let me know if you didn't love it and if it was impactful to you, if it wasn't impactful, just in general, let me know your thoughts. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all later. Bye. Thank you.